Here's some notes, some statistics on this game. Michigan was led by Charles Matthews with 20 points, 11 rebounds. Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman, 11 points. Montana scores were Michael Ogini with 15 and Ahmad Rory with 15 points. Montana shot just 32.1% for the game, 18 of 56, including 25% in the second half, 7 of 28. Michigan shot 44.7% for the game, 21 of 47. 40% in the second half, 8 of 20. Michigan scored 13 points off Montana turnovers. Montana had 9. Rebounds, Michigan 36, Montana 33. Uh, the Wolverines captured their 10th straight win. They moved to 29-7 and seven this season. They are now 15-4 and four in NCAA uh, tournament first-round games, as well as a 3-1 and one record as a number three seed. This marked the fifth straight time that Michigan's won its opening round game in the NCAA tournament. Montana had a six-game winning streak snap. They closed out the season with a 27-8 and eight record. This was their fifth straight loss in the big dance dating back to 2006. And Michigan will join us uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, student athlete uh, interview will be at 3.55 and then we'll have Coach uh, John Beeline at uh, 4.15 tomorrow. Attendance for this uh, evening session, 14,019. And again, the format, we'll have an opening statement from uh, Coach Beeline. Then we'll have uh, questions for our student athletes before we dismiss them. And we'll wrap up with Coach John Beeline. Again, the satellite coordinates are Galaxy 17, Transponder 17B. The downlink frequency is 12035.5 horizontal. Again, a reminder just to silence your phones. No flash photography allowed and no recording of any kind. Cell phone or tablet usage for video. We've just been given the starting times for Saturday. First game, Seton Hall in Kansas will tip off at 6.10 p.m. Central Time on TBS. Michigan and Houston will follow 30 minutes later on TBS. Again, tip off Saturday, Seton Hall in Kansas at 6.10 p.m. Central Time. Michigan and Houston will follow 30 minutes later.
Okay, we're ready to start. Congratulations, Coach. Quite a defensive performance by your team, especially in the well, second I, half. Yeah, but I, I was really impressed with Montana. I thought they had a great defensive performance as well. Uh, they got a really good team. Uh, I think they only have a couple seniors on the team. Um, they, they, they're going to really, they represent that university very well, and we're really pleased that we get that, that win over them. And uh, they, made, they didn't make us look very good on offense. Uh, fortunately, our defense was outstanding when it needed to be, down 10 nothing. And after that, uh, they scored 37 points the rest of the game. So really pleased that we were able to, to still get a W despite uh, the great defense Montana played. This time we're going to take questions for the Michigan student athletes. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder. Front row on the left. Yeah, this is for Charles. Charles, uh, John, or, uh, Coach Beeline talked about the tough defense Montana played. It seems like a lot of the players were kind of struggling early on. You kind of had it going. Did you sense that you had it going and try to force the action a little bit, or is that just what the defense gave you? No, I was just really playing off the offense, um, just reading what the defense gave me. Um, I saw they was blitzing a lot of our bigs in the ball screen, and I was just cutting behind them. Other questions? Go to the aisle on the right side. Uh, Mike Ogine and uh, Maude Rory uh, had pretty big games today, but not big enough. How did you guys adjust to them and keep them uh, under wraps the rest of the game? Go to Mohammed and then Charles. Uh, we just made some halftime adjustments. Uh, they got a couple of easy buckets on us in the beginning of the game. Uh, we went to halftime, made some adjustments, um, played more team defense and getting the gaps and things like that, and that gave them trouble. Other questions out there? Have you guys played a defense as tough as them this year? And just how would you describe what it was like going up against that defense? Mohammed and then Charles? Um, I would compare them to Illinois. Um, they press. Um, they try to take everything away from you. Um, they get after you. Uh, they're a lot like Illinois, I would say. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah I would go with Mohammed said. Um, they Pretty much like Illinois, a very scrappy team up in the passing lines, lanes, making it tough to get entry passes. So teams like that can make it tough for our offense, but I feel we did a good job against it. Other questions for our student athletes? Okay, guys, go celebrate in the locker room. Thank you very much. Questions for our coach? Left side by the aisle. Coach, you mentioned you fell down 10 nothing. At one point, I think it was 16 minutes to go, you're down 10. You've got four reserves on the court. Is that just a testament of how comfortable you are with the reserves? And some of these guys, they don't play a lot. Yeah, I, I don't think that, uh, I think that our team, I, I, our huddle was like a normal huddle, right? Because I really trust that these guys know what's going on. And we, uh, we'd missed a couple shots, but we just had to make, uh, make some adjustments and just hang in there and stay persistent with what we do. So I, I would love the way they stay composed during that time. That, uh, that the, the, the four minute timeout, the first one, you know, it didn't look good for Michigan at that time. But that's all, I told them, that's all we need is one, bit, one basket here. And, and, and that's, then let's win the next four minute. And we did that. And let's w win the next four minute, we did that. And all of a sudden we're ahead at half. So I just love the way they responded step by step and not trying to get it all back at one time. On the aisle on the right. Uh, at what point did you feel like, I mean, you were down early, uh, at what point did you feel like the momentum was starting to shift in your favor and you were really... You no, know, there's a point in the first half I thought it was, it was going to switch a little bit and then they made a, uh, they made a three before half and uh, we, uh, we got confused on a play so I should have called a timeout right before half but I didn't and uh, so that, then coming out of the second half, when we got stop after stop after stop starting the second half, even though we, did, we didn't convert a lot, um, I hated that long time out when the, when, when the power went out, when we were up by eight, because we didn't score for a while after that. But there was, I guess, coming out of that second half, I thought it was key the way we guarded coming out the second half. You go back, standing up on the right. There you go. Uh, early on, it seemed like their, their ball screen trap was giving you guys a little bit of trouble, and then you started finding space near the foul line, and then Charles cutting to the rim. Was that something you noticed on tape, and then it just took a couple minutes to, to get comfortable with it, or is that something you noticed as the game started? No, we were, they, you know, what, what I love about what Travis has done with this team is they, they, will, attack, they will guard ball screens. We said they're going to do everything. 
So in two days, we were trying to get ready for everything, and that was one of them. That if they came out and trapped us hard, we got a couple different things we do about one of it. One of those is to go uh, and just hit them short. So we call it actually shortstop. We call it Barry Larkin for the great Michigan shortstop who played with Cincinnati. So we hit Barry Larkin, and Barry Larkin made the plays. Other questions for Coach? I guess not, Coach. Again, well, we're going to go front row by the aisle. Okay. Sorry, one more. You mentioned um, that uh, that you guys didn't quit. They gave, they they didn't um, they showed composure. But what else do you take away from a game like that? That you can battle a team. Well, like I that? love the fact that Charles Charles Matthews, who is who's just played a li little bit maybe in a Kentucky uh, NCAA game, really went to the foul line, went six for eight. They fo they they fouled him. That he got to the rim. Uh, he really just did a great job. He was composed. Uh, I thought that was good. I thought our bench, you know, when we, Xavier hasn't had two fouls. I mean, you can see they're going to call him close in the NCAA. We haven't had Xavier with Simpson with two fouls at all the entire season. So when he ended up getting that foul, Jerron Simmons came off the bench and was terrific at three baskets. And I don't think that might be his high for the year of six points. He came in and really performed well. Eli, now, we, he needs a rest. He hasn't played a lot, so Eli Brooks goes in there and gets an assist. Right? It was really good. Jordan Poole came in and hit a three, which he had struggled in the garden. So I, I love what we got off the bench there. Any other questions? Thank you, Coach. Okay, See thank you tomorrow. You. Coach is on his way shortly here. Again, the same format. We'll get an opening statement from the coach, and then we'll take questions for our student athletes.
Coach, why don't you uh, look back at this game and give us your comments? It's a good basketball team. Um, you know, if, if you'd have told me going into the game that they'd have a negative assist to turnover ratio, turn it over 14 times, we'd take nine more shots and basically break even on the glass with eight offensive rebounds of their five, I'd probably tell you we won. Uh, I thought our guys competed. They fought. They defended. Um, you know, Michigan made some adjustments in the first half um, in, in, in our ball screen coverage, which I knew they would do. And, and once we made our adjustment, we were fine the rest of the way, but it, it cost us some buckets. Uh, and, and Charles Matthews steps up and, and, and has a big game. If you look at it, he's really the difference in this ball game because both teams struggled offensively. We, we didn't have one guy over 50%. He was the only guy for them outside of Simmons, three for three. And so, you know, it was a defensive struggle, and their defense was a little better than ours tonight. But all respect to that team, it's a very well-coached team. And like I said before, yesterday, probably one of the better coached teams in the country. They don't beat themselves. Uh, they defend, and they don't take bad shots. So that, that's going to be a very difficult team to beat. I'm proud of my team. Uh, we, we won a lot of games this year. We fought. Uh, we've had adversity that we fought through. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to have all these guys back, most of them with the exception of Fab, and see if we can bring it back and maybe perform a little better next time. This time we'll take questions for our student athletes. Please raise your hand. That microphone in the back row on the left side, guys. Yeah, it's just to have your season come to an abrupt end tonight. Just how are you feeling right now? Get it from Michael first, and then Ahmad. Um, <clears throat> to get to this point, you know, it was it's still an accomplishment to win our conference tournament. Uh, to be able to represent a one big league like the Big Sky, it's an honor in and of itself. But uh, like you said, to have the season end abruptly in the first round of NCAA tournament, it's not the best feeling. But I'm proud of the way we fought. My guys, uh, even though our shots weren't really falling, we still played hard. I feel like we did a good job of representing Montana basketball. Not too many teams do much about us going in, but I feel like they, after watching this game, they know that we're a team that plays hard and competes no matter who we're playing against. Yeah, um, first of all, um, it was good for us to help Fab get here. You know, he's a senior. He's our leader, our captain. So uh, I know he feels real good about finally getting here. So it was special for us to allow him to do that. And like Mike said, you know, we didn't want it to end like this, especially this soon. You know, we felt like we'd really come out here and get a win. But Michigan, they're a very good team. They're well coached. You know, they don't turn the ball over and they play a lot of defense. So, so right now we're just gonna just you know soak in the good season that we did have and then just get back to work in a couple of weeks. Other questions, please. On the aisle on the right. Uh, when you guys have a tough stretch like you did in the second half and you can't get the lid off the basket, you guys are the two top scorers on the team. Do you feel like it's your duty to you know, start shooting, hoping something falls, or uh, maybe help facilitate a little bit more? And what worked and what really didn't work there? Michael first. Uh, well, Coach Trapp puts a lot of confidence in myself and Ahmad. He, he gives a lot of responsibility on the offensive end. And like you said, I feel like it's kind of our duty when our offense isn't really, when our shots aren't really falling, we have to be able to go and make plays for ourselves or others, whatever the situation calls for. Uh, I just feel like credit to Michigan. That's a great team. They were locked in on Ahmad and myself. They, they didn't make it easy for us all night. It was tough to get good looks. Um, you know, that just comes down to, you know, just it wasn't our night offensively. A good thing our defense was tough, so we were able to hang around a little bit. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's tough to win a game against a team like Michigan if uh, you shoot 32% from the field. So we just have to be better. And you know, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm still proud of the way we fought, regardless of the outcome. Mont? Yeah, um, I definitely feel like sometimes it's Michael and I and my job to you know put the ball in the basket when, when we need some buckets. But you know, um, it just the lid wasn't coming off, but we still did play good defense. But you know, coach just kept trusting us, putting the ball in our hands. But especially myself, um, I had some forced looks, the charge and stuff. But just trying to get something going towards the rim and just try to get the lid off, like you said. So it's tough when that doesn't happen. In Michigan, they they do pack the lane in, so it makes it hard for you to get in there. You know, they help and they help the helpers. So threes weren't falling tonight, but proud of how we fought.
Back row on the left there. When you guys have that long power outage, did you see that as a positive, as a time to maybe reset your mind and get absent shots weren't falling, or would you rather be out there and just not have any sort of break at all? Michael first. I think you'd rather um, get the flow of the game, have it be continuous. Um, they were going on a run there. So, you know, you, you would think that it would be in our favor maybe to slow down the momentum. But I know um, I speak for myself and my teammates when I say that we were ready to go the whole night. Um, that's not an excuse or anything. Um, we're not saying that that was the reason why, you know, we played poorly in the second half. But just to answer your question, I feel like you just kind of want to get the game going. You don't want to have pauses in the action like that. I'm sure the fans don't either. Yeah, like you said, you know, they were going on a run. So when you have a power outage, we, we wanted to – the, uh, that to slow the run down, but they obviously didn't. You know, they kept making shots and they kept playing good, but we were ready to go either way, whether the power was out or not. But, you know, we wanted to just stay within the flow of the game. We have time for in the back row here. Standing, I'm sorry. Uh, just what was the experience like for you guys? What was it like going out in warm ups and, and was it fun to play in this kind of atmosphere? Michael first. It was a great experience. Um, I really like, you know, appreciate City of Wichita. They came out to support. Uh, I know they just wanted to watch great basketball, and us being the underdog, they kind of, you know, took us, took us in as their team to root for. Um, I feel like we did a good job of, like I said earlier, representing the state of Montana, representing the way we played all, um, the way we practiced all year for this man right here. Uh, we just wanted to put our best foot forward. Like I said, our shots weren't falling. Uh, things didn't go well the whole game, but I think to be here, I think, um, you know, I, you just can't. You, you can't really take away from the experience just because we lost the game. I feel like it was a huge step for our program, huge step for some of my guys. I know Ahmad has been here before, but a lot of experience coming in next year. You know, we lose Fab, but everyone else is coming back, and we're going to be hungry, and hopefully we um, have a better result next year, and hopefully we're here again. Yeah, um, it was a great experience, you know, especially after the last week, you know, us having to grind out three wins. But like he said, City of Wichita really came out, and they are real hospitable to us, you know, allowed us to – you know, play in their arena. You know, the fans were great. You know, we our fans traveled pretty good, you know, parents and stuff. So it was just great for us to just play in front of them. You know, we wanted to get a win, but the experience was – it was definitely great. Any final questions for our student athletes before we dismiss them? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. This time we take questions for the head coach. You guys are free to go. Questions for the head coach. Coach, uh, coach Beeline was very complimentary about the defensive job you did on his team, your comments on your defense. Um, I, I thought we executed well. Like I said, there was just a short stretch where they made some adjustments in our ball screen coverage that they took advantage of. And you would expect that of a well-coached team. And then from there, we, we competed well. And you know we, we held them to one shot most of the time. To only give up five offensive rebounds is huge. Um, you know, I just thought we just didn't do a good enough job offensively uh, executing and getting the shots we wanted. But like I said, that's about as good as coach team is I've seen in a long time. And uh, look forward to watching them and following them in the tournament. Um, sometimes when you lose to a team in this situation, you root for them and hope they make it all the way. OK, we got a question in the front, and then we'll go in the back. You mentioned a couple of times about how well coached Michigan is. A lot, of, a lot is made of John Beeline's offense. How difficult is that to prepare for and then to see in front of you? To me, um, when, when I say someone's well coached, they don't beat themselves. Um, you, you'll make mistakes. You, there's human error. But I, I can't recall one possession where they took a bad shot. There will be defense, defensive breakdowns because the offense can manipulate things. but, but on the offensive end for them, I just can't remember someone taking a questionable shot and allowing us to get some momentum or maybe a long rebound or whatnot. When they shot the ball, guys knew they were going to shoot it. Um, and, and to me, those are teams that don't beat themselves. Um, and so I, I don't know how many teams are like that in this field. A lot of teams, they, they play, they fly around, they're aggressive, um, they give on, on maybe a questionable shot here and there on an error on aggression. I think this team plays very smart basketball and when they play that way it's just very difficult to manipulate things and make things happen in your favor gonna go on the back row on the aisle right there 
Was there anything that you would have changed X's and O's wise heading, heading into the game? Yeah, I would have put a hoop in there that might have been a little bigger. Um, no, uh, you know, I, I think you've got to come in and play your style of basketball. You've got to do what got you here. And if you try to do anything different, you're not going to be aggressive. You're not going to play instinctively. And I thought we did that. You know, our, our biggest issue is we win the paint. We, we broke even 26-26 in the paint. Our bigs go 3 for 11. Uh, Saeed Pridget, 3 for 11. So the three guys that typically we would go inside and, and get some things in the paint from couldn't get it going. Um, and there were stretches where I'll go small and spread them out and move. But this is a very physical basketball team. And playing through the bump is easy to say, but hard to emulate in practice. And so it was kind of a game time adjustment. And we just didn't do a good enough job of that. Right side aisle. Uh, Coach, uh, Frank's question earlier, did, do you find the uh, power outage frustrating or a good opportunity to kind of coach your guys up a little bit more? No, we needed that timeout. Um, they, they, were, they were rolling. And we were in trouble a little bit. We needed to freshen up. We needed to talk. We needed to make some adjustments. I was going to probably call one the next possession anyway. Um, on the flip side, I think we got tight, though. I think guys like Mike, who, who tightened up pretty quick, uh, it took a minute to get going again. But, uh, you know, when, when, when a team is rolling on you a little bit, you need a timeout. Um, you know, last week, I took one without calling one because Eastern Washington had some momentum and we needed to stop them. So uh, I thought the timing of that was pretty good. It was just a little long. Back to the left side. Go ahead. What are you going to remember the most about this team and this season? Their heart, their passion, um, their desire to perform. Uh, I think I have a group of young men that gave me everything they had. And you can't say that for every team every year. And these guys were all in. They say family. And most of the time when you have a, a team that says family, because pretty much every team I've had says that, Sometimes you have to define it for them. And I didn't have to do that for this team. They, they act like family on and off the court, and they play like family. And I'm proud of these young men. And you know we, we, we got a tough draw. And it was a tough basketball game. They showed up. They performed. They gave us everything they had. I'll be talking about this team for a long time. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Coach, for your class.